Yeah. Yeah.
told me you'd teach me something useful. Aye, and I keep my word. How are you doing? Good, good. No one's trying to cut my throat, and I've got a proper roof over my head again. I'm glad it worked out for you. Sometimes, when I go to the courtyard at night, and there's a sudden movement or a sound that makes me jump, but it's just a memory. Good morning. Good luck, then. Yeah. 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 Greetings. 
What do you need? You waiting for someone? Not anymore, young man. I was waiting for you. You look like a clever sort of fellow, and chivalrous too. You wouldn't leave a damsel in distress, would you? Why? Do you know of one somewhere? Now, now, handsome. Don't be mean. I've got a job to offer you. There's an old granddad sitting in the alehouse there. Yesterday he made use of my services and he said he'd pay me in the morning. Only now he pretends he doesn't know me. I want you to take the groschen he owes me from his purse and bring them to me. I'm not going to steal. Taking back what rightfully belongs to me ain't stealing. But if that's how you see it... God bless. Bring me something to eat. Jesus Christ be praised. How's trade? Any trouble around these parts? Nothing we can't handle. I'd like to discuss the price. Sure, why not? What do you say to this? Well, now, a little bit more, and we'll shake on it. All right, so. Here. Look what I've got for you. You'll love this. Good morning. May the Lord watch over you. Young man, come over here.
Yeah! Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Greetings. What do you need? Goodbye. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? That'll be Lubosh. Gallows bait if ever I saw one. His place is at the end of the village next to the stream. Take him and welcome. God bless.
Greetings. What do you need? I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? There is one. A crooked bastard he is, too. I hope you're here to take him away. He lives in a cottage at the end of the village by the road to Ratai. Take care. Good day to you. Any work going here? Enough for a dozen men. You could take the place of that useless stable hand Vashek for a start. What happened? Did he do something wrong? Just found out that he lost our pie. Lost it where? In his stomach? No, no. Pie was our fastest stallion. A lovely dappled one. Oh. Well, that's bad news. How did Vashek manage to lose him? He fell. Banged his head and the horse bolted. Can you fathom it? A stable hand falling off a horse. And then Pi took off at a gallop. Well, I can't take Vasek's job, but I can try to find your pie. That would be nice of you. If there's anything you need to know, ask that fool. I was too livid to even speak to him. Right. I'm looking for a fellow who lives here, but I don't know his name. Do you know anyone with a limp? Must be that farmhand, Lubosh. I don't know what the hell you'd want him for, and I don't much care. He's got a cottage on the edge of the village near the stream. God be with you. <coughs> God be with you. How's the head? So even strangers know my shame. Come on, then. Come and take a closer look at Vachek the Blockhead. I'm not here to mock. So what is it you want? I promised the head groom that I'd look for a pie. Well, good luck with that. I've been searching half the day. Although I have been seeing double ever since that bang on the head. So it's possible I missed something. Can you describe Pi for me? Uh, long face, four legs. Uh, well, that should narrow it down. Does he have any distinguishing features? Like your colour, for instance? Sorry, he's a dappled grey, a stallion, and he's really fast. Though that won't help you much. Quite the opposite. Where did you fall off, Pi? Just south of here, between the fields and the woods, there's a crossroads where four paths meet. It was around there. Four paths? So we could have gone anywhere. Now you see my problem. When was that? In the morning. Then I staggered about for a while, feeling as rough as a boar's ass. I was glad to stagger back here in the end. Fine. I'll go and look for him. Thanks. If you find him, the groom might go easier on me. Oh, and one more thing. Well? Pies used to take in the bridal way, so I'd keep to those. That's useful. Thanks. God be with you.
Ah, this will be the crossroads. So where did Pi go? This could be from Pi. This could be from Pi.
Uh, maybe he went this way. It's not like I've got anything better to go on. Uh, maybe he went this way. It's not like I've got anything better to go on. This could be from Pi. This could be from Pi. Ah, still fresh. Ah, still fresh. God be with you. Have you seen a horse running loose? A dappled grey? I have, I have indeed. Or at least I did see a riderless horse gallop through here. It went too fast for me to be sure of the colour. Where did you see him? A short distance down the road, there's a brook. I was there fetching water when that horse gave me the fright of my life. And where did he run on to? Well, he splashed about and then ran upstream into the woods. Much obliged. My pleasure. Good luck in your search. Good luck to you. God save you. Have you seen a horse around here? A dappled grey? 
certainly have. He ran past here heading upstream. Thistle went after him and hasn't come back yet. Thistle? A local charcoal burner. None too smart. We call him Thistle. Right. Well, thank you. Take care. You look terrible. Did someone attack you? I'm afraid this horse is a runaway from the Ujit stables. You can't have it. Fuck off! I don't care where he escaped from. Go find your own horse. You're a thistle, aren't you? Hi. Do I know you? No. But as I was looking for that horse, I came across the charcoal camp, and they spoke of you. And what did they say? Oh, they were laughing at you. They seemed to think you were some kind of moron for leaving your stuff unguarded. They were laughing at me? The bastards. Thanks, friend. Anytime. Goodbye. Yeah.
My respects to you. I found pie for you. Dear God! What a relief! Between ourselves, he was none too cheap. I don't know what I'd have done if he was gone for good. Here's something for your trouble. Thank you. Just try not to lose him again. <laughs> we'll do our best. God be with you. I found that horse you lost. Really? Yes, really. Thank for all the saints. I was just about to start packing my things. I'll let you wed my daughter if I had one. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Just take more care next time. I will. I'd like you to show me how to ride a horse better. Certainly. I'm interested in more advanced techniques. All right, but it'll cost you. Isn't that quite a lot? Since it's you... That's not enough. Agreed. Now listen up. Farewell.
Да. Move along, citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. If that's what you call nothing to see, I'd like to know what something to see looks like. By the keys of St. Peter, this is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanush. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanush's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof, and... I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say he had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you. To Limpy Lubosch. Or all that's left of him. Take a look around and ask a few more questions, if that's all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Who was Limpy Lubos? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time. But he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Did he have any kith or kin in the village? None. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk. So you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Another thing about Lubos. Good God. What happened to your clothes? If you were robbed, you should report it. I've come in the name of Sir Hanish of Lipo. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. Who was this Lubosch who was murdered? You could see at first glance he was no good. 
I kept well out of his way. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. Do you know what Lubos was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I don't think he was home. I didn't see him all day. Do you know who Lubos used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. That's all. Thank you. Take care. God be with you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know anything about it, but ask all you want. That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? I didn't really know him. He kept to himself, even in the tavern. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Come to think of it, he was in church yesterday. He was even talking to the priest and went to confession. I was wondering what he was up to, to take to the faith all of a sudden. But I suppose no sins do dark for God's mercy. Do you know what Lubos was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I was coming from the tavern very late that night, and I caught a glimpse of someone entering the village. He looked like he was in a hurry. It was only a shadow against the sky, but after what happened, I wouldn't wonder. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? Not with anyone from the village. He used to sit in the tavern next to us sometimes, but he never said much. That's all. Thank you. Farewell. God be with you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Sir Hanush gives a job like that to a young fellow like you? Well, what do I care? Ask. That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? He was a strange one. Always drinking, bad-tempered. Lord knows how he made a living. Well, maybe now I've got an idea or two. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? I didn't see much of him lately, not even in the tavern. Not till yesterday in church, as it happens. Do you know what Lubos was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? I don't think he was home at all. Wait, are you saying he... Jesus. Do you know anyone Lubos used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? I really don't know. As far as I know, he had no kin. I never saw him with anyone. That's all. Thank you. Good luck to you. Good day to you. What do you need? Good luck then. My respects to you. I've come in the name of Sir Hanush of Lipa. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course. Ask away. That man Lubos who was murdered, what was he like? He was a drunk who was always looking for a fight. Nobody liked him much. But I wouldn't wish an end like that on any man. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Well, now I think of it, I hadn't seen him around for a while. No idea where he was skulking. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? Not a clue. Do you know anyone Lubosch used to spend time with? Relatives or friends? He was a loner. He didn't even have any mates in the tavern. That's all. Thank you. Farewell. <laughs>
Good day to you. What do you need? Take care now. Good health to you. They have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him. That would explain why he didn't scream. Lord above, they did a hell of a job on him. Must have been agony. How come no one heard anything? An inscription in blood. It's a pity I don't know how to read. Looks like they wanted to give someone a warning. But who? And a bandit who knows how to write isn't something you see every day. Jesus Christ be praised. May the Lord watch over you. so rosy either. Sir Hanush let the skeletons lot off paying dues, but they're still reduced to beggary, and that makes for bad blood. Uh-huh. God keeps on testing us. Amen. Good day to you. May the Lord watch over you. Is there something you need?
Apples straight from the tree, melons right off the vine, and beetroots fresh from the field. Good day to you. May the Lord watch over you. My respects to you. I'd like to learn to read. You? Hmm. You don't look like the makings of a priest or clerk. But why not? I've taught all sorts. Bear in mind, it won't be all that easy. You'll need plenty of time and a few groschen for my trouble. All right. I don't want to waste time. We can get started. The sooner I master it, the better. Very well. I will require some groshing from you, though, and set aside at least a couple of days so I can put you through your paces, if indeed time is of the essence. Here are your groshing. Then we may as well start. No. So he did break his vow, but better than to dishonor it here. May he follow his heart. Wake up, lad. It's time we were getting on. So, let's see you read a bit. There's a book here on the table. Try to read it. Will I manage? You ought to be able to. It's a simple text. Come back once you've worked your way through it. I've read the book. Wonderful. So tell me, what have you learned? That being greedy doesn't pay. Excellent. You're one of my most talented pupils. You've uncovered the meaning hidden in the letters. Like I told you, books are valuable. And the words that you place in them ought to be no less so. Does that mean that I can read then? Yes, you have the foundation. Remember, my boy, the pen is mightier than the sword. To fully learn your way around words will take a lot more reading yet. Now we'll move on to the second lesson, which will be much harder. 
Many books are written in Latin, the language of erudite and religious men. If you really want to be able to read, there's no getting away from Latin. There's a book on the table with some text. Read it and then come back. You need not understand it, but you should master the letters. I only just managed the fable about the goose, and now you're asking me to tackle Latin. <laughs> you're a clever lad. You'll manage... I read the page. So tell me, Distrupule, what's written there? Uh, nullus est liber tam malus. Uh, oops. Non uh, liqua parte prosit. Good heavens! Don't tell me you haven't had lessons before. Excellent. Well, there's nothing more I can teach you. Congratulations. You can go and be ordained right away. Thank you, Domine. I'm feeling a lot uh, wiser. Judas. Hmm. Looks like this is meant to be a warning. But for who? And why? Maybe the gang had a falling out. But a bandit who knows how to write isn't something you see every day.
I'm getting desperate now. Why is that, for the love of God? You know what my old man is like. Nothing ever good enough for him. Always turning his nose up at everything I cook. You'd think he had blue blood. What is it this time? He brought me a hair and said, make something special with it. Ah, picky is he? That's putting it mildly. I can't do it in cream sauce because it gives him gut trouble. He can't stand the smell of garlic, hates mustard, and bacon is too common for him. Oh, I see. That's a nuisance. Can you think of anything I can do it with? Look, it's all about the seasoning. Just roast it with a bit of lard, the same as usual, but add some rosemary and juniper. Rosemary? The best thing for hair. I heard it's from a travelling merchant. He had it in Prague and said it was delicious. <coughs> All right, so, I'll try it. And if he doesn't like it, I'll lock him in the hen coop so he'll have a proper appetite. God be with you. Good evening. I've come in the name of Sir Hanish of Lyper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? Ask away. Who was this Lubosh who was murdered? He was a drunkard and a beast, and lazy too. Idle hands are the devil's tools. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? The only thing seemed suspicious was how a rogue like him suddenly started going to church. Now I see why, of course. Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhoff was raided? What do I care about that scoundrel? I was glad he stayed out of my way. Do you know who Lubosch used to spend time with? Kin or friends? He was always a loner. Except lately he started talking to the parish priest of all people. That's all. Thank you. God bless. My pleasure. Blessings of our good Lord be with you, Father. 
I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lypa, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosh? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know. And I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son. And one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances. And this is one of them. But Lubosh is dead. You can't hurt him. But if you don't tell me, more innocent people may die. If I told you, I would be betraying a vow that's a cornerstone of the Holy Church. If people believed the sanctity of the confessional couldn't be trusted, the consequences would be even worse than that. Worse than the death of innocent Christians? Worse than the murderer escaping punishment? No one escapes punishment. Father, Lubosh was my only lead to the Neuhoff Raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening, in the tavern, over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. All right. Thank you, Father. May the Lord watch over you. I'll be right back with that. Hello? The blessings of our Lord be... And with you, lad, take a seat. Service is a bit slow hey, here today. I'm dying at first, dear. I'm sorry I can't tell you everything. But 
Maybe we can work something out. But first, I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? I'm from Scarlet. Oh, I'm sorry. What about your kin? They're dead. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, we'll drink to them. It must have been terrible. It was terrible. It seemed so pointless. We had no warning. He just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. He killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Talmberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of the church in Rovna. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... they... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. Yeah, give me a bit. You think I'm too young for the job, Father? I do, to tell the truth. Well, I can only apologize for my lack of gray hair and gout. Now the most important thing. What actually happened at Noyo? The good well, folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things. But I take most of it with a pinch of salt. The rumors aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarreled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claimed. Dreadful. Well then, Here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Henry, that's not how it works. All right, all right. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once... You'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. One beer for me. Oh, you're just making excuses. The people who say the church is corrupt are right. You don't care about anyone, only your own comfort. I'm sorry you see it that way. Really sorry. You have no idea how wrong you are. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where else do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujits isn't prog. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. <laughs> Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. Yeah. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And, of course, describing them in detail. Yeah. A tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life, with a nice moral to them, are popular as well. Especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? Well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague, in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hus is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church. The lamentable wealth in which the church is drowning has turned to poison. And nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth, and they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay, and you will have absolution. 
What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive furs. While Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation is completely different. Huth preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor. Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I'm no better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sasau Monastery. What do you think of this Jan Hus? He's certainly a wise man. A little overzealous for my taste. If he got out of Prague and came here for a look, I'm sure he'd stop condemning drinking and lying with women. Where can I find out more about his teachings? Do you like it? I copied down some of his sermons. If you're interested, you can read them at my presbytery. Pour me one. What do the common folk think of it? They like it. They're happy to hear someone say what they think themselves, but are afraid to say aloud. Things that make them angry. And they're calling for change. In a few years, it'll have grown beyond control. You mark my words, the people will rise up and the church will be shaken to its very foundations. Yeah, unless they burn him at the stake first. Nonsense. They can't burn a master of the most respected university in Europe. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticizes the Pope for, be, for debauchery? No, I don't. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Enough of this! Bailiff! Come on over here, sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So, I'll have you all whipped, and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men! Throw them out. You looking for a fight? Henry, back me up. I'll cut you. I'll cut you. 
Look at this beauty. Oh. Oh. We can't do this, can we? Who says? <laughs> Get ringing, wench. <laughs> <laughs> this is wonderful. And now, my dears, comes the climax of the evening. <laughs> Godwin, you old goat. Come here. The priest has mounted up. What do you say, Henry? Shall we take a little ride of our own? Well, I have to say that was a fine evening. Oh. 